Alrighty, hello everybody, and we're back with another video, and today, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit late to the party, I will admit, but today, I'm going to talk about Vim 9. Now, Vim 9 is the next major release from 8.2 back in December of 2019, so this is a big event for pretty much any Vim user, and what Vim 9 aimed to do is to improve a lot of issues with Vim's compatibility, especially with its scripting language. So Vim 9 actually introduced a full new version of VimScript. That's right guys, we now have a new version of VimScript. And there were two major things that Bram was going for when he made all of these changes to Vim. And the main goal, the, the number one on the list, was speed and performance. Vim 9 script it does a lot of backend changes in order to make the language a lot faster and a lot more usable on systems where, you know, resources may be, may be a bit thin or you may not have everything you want. And the secondary goal is to remove some of the weird cruft from Vim, the Vim specific things, uh, for instance, you know, call and eval for, you know, getting stuff that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in modern programming languages. So the idea was Vim 9 is to take some of that old weird Vim cruft and kind of modernize it a bit. So, of course, with all of that, Vim Scripts 9 is a quite a bit less backwards compatible with Vi, but... Bram has actually uh, made it clear that legacy scripts will still be supported. And from the looks of it, from looking through mailing lists, through discussion threads and whatnot, it doesn't look like this will change anytime soon. So if you want a bit more info on it, there is the Vim help uh, manual, the uh, vim9.txt within Vim's So if you want to, you know, take, take a bit of a poke around and see what's going on, then this will definitely answer all of your questions. So, however, I'm not really going to go over a lot of the changes to Vim because I'm pretty sure that one who is actually interested enough in this will take a look at the help manual. But rather, I want to talk about the Outlash. Uh, jumping, jumping on the horse here, but... Today, I'm going to take a bit of a look on why I feel this is the absolutely most stupid and retarded thing that anyone has done and complained about an editor. Now, mainly, the backlash has been from NeoVim users. Hmm, I wonder, maybe they're starting to become a bit more self-aware. Uh, so, mainly, a lot of NeoVim users have been getting up all in rage about absolutely nothing that affects them in reality over VimScript, and they've been shilling, oh, use Lua, 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 and I'm gonna kind of state my thoughts and opinions on this, and kind of the first thing that comes around is, and Vim's kind of always been one of those off projects of Vim, where the community has been uh, quite possibly one of the most weirdest ones on there, uh, more toxic than pretty much a lot of other places. Um, I think even Reddit is a bit less toxic than the NeoVim community in general. I mean, there are there, there are some good people, but they're, they're so hard to find. And all they do is complain about speed and like, oh my gosh, I need to have this faster. And so it's, it's, it's annoying that these people are trying to make themselves involved in a project that really doesn't matter all that much to them. I mean, technically it does, but in the now, it doesn't really matter. And along with that, I don't know why NeoVim uh, users are complaining about this, because NeoVim and Vim have had two very different goals from the start. Uh, when Vim started back, way, way back when, it was focused on being an improved version of the original Vi editor made by Bill Joy. So that was the main idea that Bram had when he made Vim, is compatible and as you know, backwards, as backwards compatible as possible with the original Vi, and as portable as possible to a lot of other operating systems. And that has, that has been the case with Vim, and it's been a very good editor because of that. Whereas NeoVim really started its debut at about, you know, 2014, 2015-ish, 
and the idea was to have a bit more of a bleeding a bit more community centered project um all that really came out of NeoVim is uh, a few performance hacks and then Lua configuration. I don't know. It's your take on that. And I feel like I it gets me so annoyed at this because Vim 9 is a genuine improvement with Vim. And they say, oh, it's going to be a buggy mess and nothing's ever going to be right. Well, for the longest of time, the NeoVim Lua API has also been a buggy and incomplete mess as well. If you've ever done your own hand-rolled config with as little plugins as possible, you'll probably will have felt some of the pain, especially in terms of how Lua is structured. It, it's not all that ideal for Vim. And, you know, people have been complaining all on YouTube. You can just see all of this on YouTube. And that that's not, it's, it's really not a good look on the NeoVim community when they're bashing an editor that has directly in directly benefited them and really oh, their argument has been oh vim just use lua and there, there's a lot of reasons why i don't think would be very great to choose this and mainly it has to do with lua isn't the most portable solution or the most compatible solution sure it's just a c you know a few hundred lines of c but you have to work with distributions and you have to work with a lot of other extra variables rather than just Vim's code base in general. And along with that, Bram also uh, said on the topic of why not using an existing embedded language is because Vim already has quite a lot of support for Perl, Python, Lua, and TCL. I mean, I mean, this document alone says that. And I think... If you've really gone into looking at plugins, you'll see that there are plugins written in, you know, like TypeScript for Conqueror of Code or Python for UltiSnips, which comes off the top of my head. Um, I think the reason why this is a better approach is because when Vim 9 is just close to Vim, it makes more sense as an editor because Lua has its own way of doing things and it's changed quite a bit. It's still a great tool. But in terms of Vim, which already has had its own language built into it before Lua was really even a big thing, scrapping all of that code and saying, all right, we're going to choose Lua instead is kind of stupid and doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So anyway, that's kind of a bit of a short rant on the release of Vim. I myself am personally super hyped and super excited for this update because I've started to use Vim a lot more in work environments and in small embedded environments and having faster and more uh, performance wary configs is honestly a huge benefit. So anyway, that's all for this video. I will see you all in the next one. Peace.